Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we are looking at how you can expand your use of Blender from a single user tool to a multi user tool. And of course, we've always used every 3D software from a single user point of view. And today we'll be talking about how you can expand Blender to a multi user software. By default, this is not something that you get directly in Blender natively. This is made available via an add-on. And the add-on which we're talking about is the mixer add-on that has been made available by the folks at Ubisoft. And we've already talked about this. We had a conversation, made a video about it when it was still in beta. And today it is finally available as a full piece of add-on that you can get. So you can get version 1.0.1 right now for free. And I'm gonna put links in the description. I'll take you over to the GitHub, the GitLab, where you can get it. In today's video, we're going to talk about how you can get started, the problems you'll be facing, how you can overcome these problems and certain things that we found out while testing this. And with that said, let's get right into it. So getting started, you need to go over to the link in the description that will bring you over to the GitLab or to the GitHub where you can download this. And to download this from the GitHub is very, very simple as you need to go over to the section which is called releases. And right from there, you would be able to also check out the release that is most recent, download it and get working with it. If you come over to the GitLab right here, you'll be able to also download this from here. Now, the source file is also available for those who like to work with the source code. And this is quite interesting. So with this said, if you go through and install this add-on within your Blender, right here we have Blender 2.93. If you go through to install it, once you go ahead and press N on your keyboard and go over to Mixer, you would notice that you have the Mixer version 1.0.1 installed. In the beginning, this is as simple as it gets because you're just working on your desktop. And this is for those who like to work, you know, side by side, this works pretty fine. Now things actually start getting tricky when you want to work via a network. Let's say for example, you have two versions of Blender simply opened, you can actually work with these things across. So in this case, if I go in and hit connect right here and then press N on the keyboard as well, go over to the mixer on this other side and give it a new name and call it new and uh, hit connect as well and create a room and join the room. And I would also click right here and join this room. Something that we did notice is the last scene that you were working with probably for a long time, maybe the scene which you kept as open would simply load up before the brand new scene loads in. And this happens mostly for your very first room that you've created. So the first room which we created is set to new. And this is one of those things that happens once you get started working with it. And after that loads up, you get to see a fresh scene here, which loads up. And of course you can go in and start creating some very interesting piece. So in this case, you can actually throw in a whole lot of things. So you can see as I work on this part, you get to see that update on this other side. So for example, if I try to subdivide this, you can see all of that stuff. If I press the tab key and I choose to do maybe an extrusion, you can also see that happening. And uh, we also found out that once you're working with this, once you go out of the edit mode, that is when this updates. So if you press the type key now and jump out of the edit mode, you would notice that we have that updating on the fly. And this is really, really nice. Things starts getting tricky when you're working via a network. And to actually get started working via a network, you need to install the Hamachi private VPN. So with the Hamachi VPN installed, you would need to create an account. So once you press the power button, it will resolve, you know, find all the necessary connection, and after probing, it would require you to create an account. Then you would also notice that there are two options here. Now, this is after you've created your account, you can now choose to either create a new network or you can choose to join an existing network. Your clients, your team members, whoever that will be working alongside with you needs to hit on join an existing network. Now, if you're the one hosting the network, you need to click on create a new network. So for this example, I'm just going to go ahead and create a network ID, which is going to be ask NK underscore mixer underscore tube, and then we would enter a couple of passwords. Now, once you're done with this, you would notice that we have the ask NK mixer tube right here. And if you click on this drop down, you would notice how many persons that have joined in. Now, depending on the number of people that have joined to your network, which is currently limited by five, since it's for free, you can actually see them right there. Now, if you do have team members, they'll also need to install the Hamachi VPN, create an account and click on join an existing network. Now, if they click on join an existing network, they need to enter your network ID, which in this case is askNK underscore mixer underscore tube and then enter the password. And once they're done, they can click on join and that way they'll be able to join your network. But there's a couple of things to keep in mind, a couple of things to actually make sure they are fixed before you get started with it. So let's believe that your clients, your team members, they've installed the Hamachi VPN. You have it done. 
they also need to make sure or you also need to make sure that you're using exactly the same version of blender that they are using or they are using exactly the same version of blender you have so something else to also keep in mind is you need to hand them over your ip address so there's an ip address that is right on top here after the power button you need to hand it over to them and they need to put the ip address directly where they have localhost in the mixer add-on now the host doesn't need to change his or her ip address he or she needs to leave it as localhost but the team members and the clients they need to change theirs to the ip address of the host and after the host has clicked on the connect button and connected they need to assign a name and create a room and these rooms are going to be available to all of your team members so once they join the room you would notice the number of persons that have joined the room and then you would see that each user has a given color you'll notice that the ip address shows right here so we did run into a tiny bit of problem when i was using blender 2.30 and you know the other person was using a different version of blender so this simply means that if you and your team members are using different versions of blender this will not work and that's by that there's also a couple of things to keep in mind when working with this tool one of them is if you're working within the edit mode your team members would not be able to see what you're working on unless you are within your object mode same thing happens to anyone working within the edit mode because they would also not be able to see any of the updates happening within the object mode once they're within the edit mode so if you would like to see the final product you need to be in the object mode to see everything once you're within the edit mode if there's any update you'll probably not be able to see it and also try as much as possible not to edit the same model at the same time with your team members and this also goes alongside for sculpting so most of the time only once sculpt action would prevail over the others so i would strongly suggest that you'd stick to one person doing the sculpting while some other person can focus on something totally different trying to edit the same object together might not necessarily be you know the nicest thing to see so right here you can see we have two different screens so what happened is i guess we sort of messed up with one of the models and then everything just went haywire if it was a network problem we don't know you know if it was just the fact that we kind of tossed and played with the same model almost at the same time I don't really know what went on but all of a sudden we had two different scenes that was looking totally different so what we had to do was close one of the blender files reopen it again and join the room one other thing is this that when you're working with your team members especially if you're working with the mixer of course this is a general rule but just to bring it back try to communicate communication with this add-on is extremely important so one of those times I was working on something within the geometry node and my team member was also working on something totally different when they undid you know hit the control z thingy over and over it just simply took everything out so this works mostly when you're within your object mode we know the geometry node operates within the object mode and when they undid on their end which is supposed to undo their own stuff it was more like a general undo and it undid everything that I was working on within the geometry node and that could actually drive you crazy depending on what you're working on at a given time so something else to keep in mind is when you're creating or you're working as a team always save I would suggest that the host saves and um, I would also suggest that the team members also save because in most cases you might be doing something totally different because of network issues you might not be able to get real-time feedback from both parties so try as much as possible to save now it is also worth knowing that every other thing minus these things that i've mentioned they work pretty fine i mean there was even a case where team member created suzanne's head i created the grid we did a simulation directly on top of it it was interacting super cool modifiers are also going to be very visible across the globe and this is also something that makes sense so in several or at several times we did this thing where one team member just had to do a model and then we went through and just simply used an array modifier and run through the whole thing and it was perfect. Depending on how dense your scene is, sometimes this could have problems on the team members section. So sometimes when your team member is creating something that is a bit dense and the network is not so fast to relay whatever they're working on, or maybe you're creating something that is a bit more complex and your team members network or their pc is not as good as yours you might also fall into some uh, some very interesting situation so this is also something that you need to keep in mind when trying to create stuff like this and one of the places that this add-on is definitely going to shine a lot and probably make a lot of sense is if you're into look dev and the other person or your team member is into layout so this is just by far 
one of the coolest things that can definitely save time so you could be doing your look dev somewhere else and someone is just you know there making sure that everything is right where they're supposed to be and let's say you guys are three or four someone else could be just somewhere trying to make sure that the shading is looking really nice while you're working on the lighting and the other person could just be making sure that the camera movement is as cool as it can be i think a situation like that would come in very very handy another situation that could come in very handy as well is probably your modeling the other guy is trying to look at it from the camera view just to make sure that it looks cool and maybe someone could be doing a rigging or doing an animation while the other person is just busy modeling a couple of assets and trying to make sure that the scene looks pretty pretty nice generally this add-on is super awesome i would recommend this for everyone to go ahead and try it i think this add-on is just going to make everyone's life easy just look out for all of these tiny things that we experience while testing it and try as much as possible to avoid them i also see this add-on as a very good add-on to teach persons blender as people would be able to watch what the instructor is doing in real time and I've also found out that this is also going to be a very perfect add-on for those who like to compare scenes. So in one case, we were trying to compare what a scene looks like in EV versus what it would look like in Cycles. And I think this also makes a lot of sense. It just makes super sense to see that these are possibilities that you have right now. And having a multi-user sort of feature or multi-user add-on that can help you collaborate and also work with team members across the globe across the internet directly in blender is just something that right now i can't even find the words to quantify so tons of cool things that you can do with this one i just kind of feel everyone should try it out download it test it out with a team member test it out with someone and see how you can report bugs just in case there's anyone see if this is going to be good for your next workflow see if this is going to be good for your next project and that is more like it i'm going to put links to this in the description so anyone who wants to get it can either go over to the GitHub or the GitLab and download it and also put a link in the description that will take you over to the VPN where you can download this and start working with it. Meanwhile, there is also another add-on that looks exactly like this and I think it's very nice. Since we're talking about the mixer, we're talking about, you know, multi-user experience in Blender, I think this is very nice to bring to you guys notice. And this is made available by Swan Martinez. So Swan Martinez has created a multi-user add-on which does relatively the same thing that you can use with the ubisoft animation mixer and the only thing here is there's just a couple of things that this doesn't support at this point which the mixer supports a whole lot and these things include amateur the you know curves this also doesn't really support textures that much this doesn't support nodes group that much and uh, a couple of other things some of these things are still planned out some of them are coming some of them are partial some of them are not coming anytime soon but the fact that somebody is creating this before a company created this, I think it is worth mentioning and also worth appraising. So for anyone who is trying to get any of these things, link to it is going to be in the description. Test it out, see how it works and get good with it. And that's more like it. Of course, I would like to know what you guys think about this one in the comment section. For those who like to test this thing out, you want to see so many stuff like this, you want to check out some other add-ons, link to this is going to be in the description. For those who want to hit me up on Discord, link to that is also going to be in the description. So do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace